Hello and welcome to worship with Trinity United Methodist Church. My name is Ben and it's my pleasure and privilege to serve as one of the pastors here and to welcome you to this service of worship. We hope that you'll let us know that you have joined us for this. If you're, if you're here live with us, you can let some of the hosts in the chat know that you're here or use the Trinity app, which is full of lots of information and the opportunity to let us know that you're here with us in worship or what we can be joining you and praying for, as well as, of course, lots of information about what's going on in the life of the church. And speaking of the life of the church, this being the week of Christmas, there are lots of opportunities to worship with us and to have those experiences. I want to let you know about them. Uh, aside from today, or I should say beyond today, tomorrow night is the winter solstice, a day when we traditionally share together in what's called the longest night service. It's a service for those who acknowledge that even and perhaps especially in this season, uh, sometimes grief, lament, even darkness comes in. But we can bring that to God, even in worship. And if that sounds like it might be a service for you, I hope you'll join us. That will be available starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow night, December 21st. And then, of course, on Christmas Eve, there will be lots of opportunities to have a worshipful celebration of the Christmas experience. And there will be lots of experiences for that. At, at, at 3 o'clock, there will be the family service. Uh, and then, of course, at 4.30, both online and in person will be the traditional services. And at 7 o'clock, there will be modern services, again, both online and in person. And if you're planning on joining us in person here outside under the tent, I invite you to please register in advance, which you can do at our website, trinitygnv.org. My friends, again, I welcome you. I'm so glad that you've joined us. And I invite you to come together in the power of the Holy Spirit as we worship God together. every person's heart receives the light of Christ. I dream of church services that give me hope. I dream of love as the default. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love.
May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. So as we continue worship this morning, I want to just invite you to take a few moments and, and let's, let's rest in God and bow our heads and pray together. Let's pray. Loving God, in the rush of this last weekend before the Christmas celebration, we come to worship to be fed by you. We need the peace, hope, joy and love this season brings. This Advent season is so different than normal, whatever normal is. The celebrations, preparations, and, and family gatherings are more tenuous, difficult, and even stressful under the blanket of COVID. Some will not even gather with friends or family this year because of concerns about safety. So come to us now, comforting God, with your powerful words of healing. Help us to remember the witness of Mary, a young girl who never could have imagined the role you would have her play. Put the brakes on our rushing, banish our fear, and sit us down to hear the story of your absolute love for us. Get us ready for the birth of your son who will become our savior. Remove our anxieties and struggles and move us from the focus of celebrations and gifts to resting in your love and witnessing to that through serving others. By the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us with trust and remind us that through you, even the impossible is possible, as it was for Elizabeth and for Mary. Keep us focused on the eternal yes response to your call to us to live our lives as those who would joyfully serve you. Heal and comfort us, Lord, this day and always. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
we celebrate a time of offering this morning during worship, I first of all want to take an opportunity to say thank you to you, Trinity friends and family. Your commitment and generosity this year, a year that has been unlike any other, has just been simply tremendous. We are grateful for the continued support you have given to our missions and ministry. In a year when we haven't been able to worship in person for several months, when now we're worshiping outside under a tent with a limited number, um, you all have continued to join us online and continued to be faithful in your giving. We so much appreciate that and are grateful for the ways that you will continue to do so through the end of the year as well. So just know that there are three ways that you can give and you'll see that slide on your screen through the Trinity app, going to the Trinity website, trinitygnv.org, or putting a check in the mail or dropping it off in the mailbox at the church. Again, we appreciate your faithfulness and your generosity. Each Sunday, we also have the opportunity to give to a particular mission box offering. And today's mission box offering is to an organization called P4H Global. It's a nonprofit that is redefining aid and focusing on how to help without hurting. The mission of P4H Global is to transform nations by eliminating poverty. And their main work is through a comprehensive program in Haiti that focuses on comprehensive school a quality assessment program and uh, empowering local leaders to train and support teachers in, in that country. They also have other programs, sustainable development, master class, and impact trips so that other individuals can be trained in how to offer aid and support and transformation and help without hurting. So again, take the opportunity in just a moment to offer your gifts to God through our regular tithes and offerings and also through the mission box. But before that, let me invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. Generous and loving God, we thank you for the many gifts that you have showered upon us. And we pray now that you will bless the gifts that we give as we return a portion of them to you. Multiply these gifts and use them for your work in ways that are beyond our, our imagination. Use them to support the ministries and mission of Trinity as we reach out to our community and our world. We give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. I grew up with Batman. I can remember as a kid how much I loved watching the episodes of the Batman TV series that were on in those days. In fact, I can still remember the theme song, maybe some of you do as well, da na 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 Batman, starring Adam West. I loved watching those shows back in those days, and so many years later, 
When the news came out that there would be a movie that told the story of Batman Begins, I was definitely intrigued. And so I convinced Catherine to join me for a trip to the movie theater to see that story. It was fascinating to to look at how they had depicted the early years of Bruce Wayne's life that led to the story of Batman. Batman Begins is one example of what today we call a prequel. Now I know what some of you are thinking. There is a prequel that came out a few years earlier than that that many of you were eagerly anticipating. After having seen episodes four, five, and six of Star Wars, the original trilogy, you were eager to see episode one, The Phantom Menace. These prequels kind of capture our imagination as they tell backstories and help us fill out the details that then inform the trajectory of someone's life or story. So last week in worship, we took a look at a part of Luke 1 that tells us the story of Mary's song, what we often refer to as the Magnificat. Today, interestingly enough, in the life of the church and in the cycle of the church's readings during Advent, we get in the fourth week the prequel to the song that we hear in the third week. You know, there is often a story behind the stories or acts of courage in our lives, and often those stories involve a person or persons who were there when we needed them to help us find that courage. We see this quite often in the Bible, and it is certainly true in the story of Mary's song. So we're going to take a look at that story today, but before we do, I want to invite you to lean into it with me by receiving this prayer. Would you join me? Holy God, before you could speak, you were speaking. Leaping in wombs, kicking, stretching, jumping for joy. You have always found a way to show up in our midst, particularly on our fearful or lonely days. So today, as we crack open our Bible... Fluttering through these old beloved pages, we ask that you would move again, stir in us, speak to us, fill us with the Holy Spirit. And if we are not able to hear your word clearly, then give us Elizabeths who will point out your presence in delight and joy. Before you could speak, you were speaking. So here and now, Creator God, we are listening. Amen. So our reading for today comes from Luke 1, beginning with verse 26. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary, 
got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Imagine the scene with me, if you will. Mary, a teenage girl from nowhere, or at least nowhere that we would recognize, some rural village in the outer regions of Israel. You know, there's a long history of artists and musicians and theologians seeking to depict what this scene might have been like when the angel Gabriel comes to visit her. The Annunciation, as some of the historic artwork refers to it. And it's interesting, the wide range of presentations of art, of music, and even theological reflection on this story help capture the collage of emotions that we see present in the story itself. Mary is at one moment confused and then surprised and scared, at another curious and then courageous, and then in the end we hear a sense of resolve. All of these emotions going on in those few moments as Gabriel is there speaking to her. Gabriel, the angel whose assignment was to deliver the news to Mary that she would be having a child, and not just any child, that she would be carrying God's own son. Now, Gabriel does his best to make sure that that she is comforted in receiving this message. Do not be afraid, Mary. You are favored, Mary. God is showing honor to you. He even goes on to, to let her know also about her cousin Elizabeth and the fact that she too is carrying a child so that they might have some camaraderie in that and also so that she might know that if God can bring a child to Elizabeth and Zechariah, then God could surely bring a child to her. And so as he leaves and flies away from that moment with Mary, we hear his final words, nothing is impossible for God. After Gabriel's departure, I imagine Mary trying to hold on to those words. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. This is, it's going to be okay. And yet I also imagine all of those emotions resurfacing again and the questions coming up in her mind. Did, was there really an angel here or, or did I just make that up or did I dream that somehow? I, I, I'm not sure what to think. And I'm sure that more than once she repeated that question she had asked Gabriel while he was there. How can this be? How can this be that, that, that I'm pregnant? I mean, I I haven't even been married yet. I'm, I'm engaged, but I haven't been with Joseph yet. How could this possibly be? And, and how can this be happening to me right now? And, and, and what's going to happen? What will my parents say? What will the neighbors say? What will the village do to me? All of these questions, but that question of how can this be keeps coming back. Boy, that's quite a question For a year like this one, isn't it? The year that we have been living in. How can this be? How can it be that that a virus could wreak such havoc on our communities and on our nation and on our world? How can it be that so many people have lost their lives in this pandemic? How can it be that, that I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay rent next month or not because I don't know if, my, if I'm going to be able to keep the doors open to my business? How can it be that, that a man is, is suffocated and, and has the life snuffed out of him because of the color of his skin? How can it be that, 
that friend that I used to spend so much time with and so enjoy that, that we are, our relationship is fractured right now because of politics? How can it be that people are so angry with one another because of what they think and because of what they believe? How, how can these things be? Well, let's go back to Mary for a moment. In this swirl of emotions and questions that she is having, suddenly a moment of clarity comes. And in that moment, she knows exactly what it is that she needs. And so she packs a bag and she, she heads for the mountains to visit Elizabeth, her cousin, at her home. As she arrives, she doesn't see anybody, and so standing in the doorway, she calls out, Elizabeth? Elizabeth would have recognized that voice anywhere. She turns from the kitchen and as she does, she feels the baby that is in her own womb kick with joy. And as she walks out, the first words out of her mouth are, Mary, God has blessed you. Oh, how much those words must have meant to Mary in that moment. She had heard the news from Gabriel assuring her that things would be okay, that she was favored, but to hear it from her cousin Elizabeth was just what she needed. I love this image of that moment and what it might have been like that Liesl Gwen Garrity captures for us. Elizabeth wrapping her arms around Mary, Mary sinking into her chest as we see the fatigue on her face and perhaps the release and the relief in that moment. It reminds me of times when our daughter Shelby was growing up and especially sometimes in her middle school and even into high school days. When there were tough days, it is tough being a teenage girl. And some days she just needed to come in And she needed to sink her head in my chest and to wrap her arms around me and for me to wrap my arms around her. And my only job was to just sit there and let her hold on as long as she needed to. She would get up when she was ready. And so here is Mary in this moment sinking into Elizabeth's arms, the weight of all the emotions she was feeling evaporating. And there she finds the reassurance she needs. And when she's ready, she steps back. And she and Elizabeth look at each other. And then they begin to dream together. Because those who dream, my friends, are never alone. And their dreams begin to take shape as they talk And as they do, a song bubbles up in Mary like the world had never heard before. That song that she then sings, the Magnificat. You know, some of us these days may be feeling like Mary as she was on her way to visit Elizabeth. A swirling of emotions, questions, and uncertainties, and needing that reassurance from somewhere, someone, overwhelmed even, it may be, with all that we are feeling. And I would just say to you today, if if that is where you are, seek out the people who will reassure you in these days. And seek out the presence of the living God who is always there for you in these days. And then some of us may be at a point where we have the capacity to be Elizabeth for someone else. To be that reassuring presence. To be the empathic listener. To have the patience to sit with someone as long as they need until they are ready to dream again. You know, this story this week and, and this idea of prequels got me thinking that perhaps this time that we are living in right now 
is itself a prequel. There is a new song that is waiting to be sung. There is a new day that I trust surely is coming. And if we are living in the prequel, that means that we get to be a part of writing the backstory to whatever it is that is coming. My friends, together we can find our way. We just have to hold on to hope in the meantime until we get there. And remember this, nothing is impossible for God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we come again to this table, joining our hearts in front of these ordinary gifts. As we do so today, I want to invite you to join me in an affirmation of faith, an affirmation of the invitation to this table, to these gifts. We believe that this world is hard, harder than it has to be. When the world falls apart around us, we believe in listening for the angels that say, do not be afraid. And in seeking out the Elizabeths in our lives, those who laugh with joy at our arrival and throw open the doors to their homes. We believe that healthy relationships can offer healing through the laughter of cousins, the joy shared between siblings, and the home found in partnership. Therefore, we believe in church families, in chosen families, and in the love that extends beyond family. We believe in friendships, in neighbors, and in leaning on each other when the going gets tough. We believe in the triune God, lover, beloved, and love itself, inherently rational, always connected, and never alone. We believe that the same belovedness exists for us. We believe that we are loved and claimed, never alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Thanks be to God indeed for a love that gave himself up for us, for a love that paid the way for us to come to this table, and for a love that continues down through the ages into each of our lives with this gift of loaf and cup, this gift of Christ's body and blood, this gift of love and grace. As we prepare the tables together, I say tables because this table is here and whatever is in front of you, the table is also there. As we prepare these elements together, I invite you to join me as I do so, as I lift and break the bread. I invite you to lift the bread or the crackers, whatever you have for the body. And as I lift the cup, I invite you to do the same with what you've gathered for the blood. Because my friends, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we come together, not just at tables, but at the table that Christ has set for us. And so we remember. We remember the night before Jesus gave himself up for us. When he gathered with the disciples, he took a loaf of bread. And he gave thanks to God, and then he broke that bread. And he shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you, broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was over, he took a cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to God and shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that are before us. Make them be for us your body and your blood, your presence, your love, your grace, so that in our receipt of them we would be nourished by your incredible gifts. Make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. Serving you with every breath we take. Seeking to trust in you. And to find sustaining in your mercy. For we ask these things in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, at this time I invite you to receive these gifts given for you, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for joining us for worship today. I want to remind you that this Thursday we will be celebrating Christmas Eve. Please join us for one of our services either online or in person. I also need to inform you that our 430 service outside under the tent is at capacity for being under the tent. Feel free to register for the 7 o'clock service or if you'd really like to come to the 430 in person you can always bring a lawn chair and just sit outside the tent and join us that way. And now as you go from this time of worship, may you know that with God nothing is impossible. We are leaning toward the good news of Emmanuel, God with us. And as we continue in this season, may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen.